Hello, everyone. I'm Hal Eisner. Remember when all of this first started, there were three symptoms. Shortness of breath, dry cough, fever. Remember that? Now there are more, and they're pretty bad. We're going to talk about two today that are presumed symptoms. We're going to talk about one in the next segment, but first, we're going to talk about one that's been getting a lot of news attention in the last few days. Doctors are seeing more and more patients showing up at hospitals with strokes and blood clots. And particularly younger people, people under 50, even people down as low as 30. Researchers are exploring that connection to COVID-19. Dr. Susie Bash joining us now. She's with RadNet. She's a neuroradiologist, which, which means basically her focus is the brain, so she understands this better than most. Welcome back. You've been on our show before. Glad to have you back here. How are you? How's your family? Everybody doing okay? We're doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Well, let's talk about this uh, the stroke phenomenon. Well, what's going on with that? What, what do you know? All right. Well, even before this whole COVID epidemic, strokes were a huge health issue. Um, the stroke basically is a sudden loss of blood flow to the brain. And there are two different kinds of stroke. We have ischemic strokes due to a blood clot that makes up 90% of our strokes. And then 10% are caused due to a brain bleed, a hemorrhagic stroke. And stroke is the fifth leading cause of death in the United States and actually the second leading cause of death worldwide. It's the number one cause of disability. But since this whole COVID crisis, we've actually seen that strokes have doubled in incidence since the crisis started. And strokes in young people, ages 30 to 50, have actually increased by about sevenfold since the COVID surge. So it's a very interesting phenomenon. And actually, neurologic symptoms are quite common. So if you're infected by COVID, about one in three people will develop some kind of neurologic symptoms. Now, that may be something like a bad headache or anosmia where you lose the ability to smell or confusion, but sometimes, more rarely, you can see very significant neurologic symptoms like seizures and stroke, and that's what we're now starting to see much more of. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you this question. Wait, wait, wait. Blood clots, how does COVID, how does COVID affect us with blood clots? I mean, how are they connected? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So we really think that this surge in the number of strokes is due to COVID causing a blood clot. And the, it really has to do with the mechanism of infection. So we, COVID gets into our, um, into our bodies through respiratory droplets or direct contact through the mouth, nose, and eyes. And then it invades our cells through these ACE2 receptors that are on the surface of our cells. That stands for angiotensin converts, um, converting enzyme. And those are on our major organs, such as our lungs, our heart, our uh, kidneys, intestine, and even our brain. But very importantly, these ACE2 receptors are on our blood vessel walls. So the virus directly invades into the blood vessel wall and incites a big inflammatory response. And that combination of the inflammatory response and the vessel invading can disrupt the delicate balance of our clotting cascade and make us more prone to develop blood clots. And these blood clots can actually happen anywhere in our blood vessels in our body. So if you get a blood clot in a deep leg vein, we call that a DVT or deep venous thrombosis. That can flick up to the right side of your heart and into the arteries in your lungs and cause a pulmonary embolism or PE. And if it's big enough, it can actually cause you to stop really, um, breathing. If the blood clot forms in the arteries that supply the heart, that will result in a heart attack. But if they form in the arteries that supply the brain, that results in a stroke. And something very, very interesting is happening. We're seeing that there's a predilection for these blood clots to form in the large vessels of the brain. So they're called LVOs, large vessel obstruction. And that's very concerning bad news because that means that a lot of these strokes we are seeing are not the minor strokes, but really the larger catastrophic strokes, even in young people. Well, let me, let me so, interrupt for one second because you said something. Yep, yeah, Dr. Bash, let me just say something real quick. You said something that I think is important not to gloss over, and that's the ACE receptor. And I think a lot of people heard that. Maybe it just went to the side because what is an ACE receptor? And what that is, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the way I understand it, we think of the coronavirus as a ball with spikes on it. That's what makes, that's why it's called a coronavirus. And those spikes are like a key. And when they get to the ACE receptor, which is part of a cell, it acts like a lock and a key. And that's how the uh, virus gets into the cell and then the cell replicates and that causes the virus to replicate. Did I, did I do that right? 
That's how the cell gets in and starts replicating. Exactly. And then, it, 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 again, it incites this big inflammatory response, which is when that happens in the blood vessels, that's why we end up getting an increased number of clots. And, and then, therefore, that's why we're getting these, all these new strokes. Well, let me just ask you, because we only have a minute left. How do we spot a stroke? A stroke? It's the BFAST acronym, right? Explain that real quickly. That's correct, yes. And it's actually extremely important to talk about because we're finding that people are delaying in calling 911 because they're afraid to go to these hospitals. But it's absolutely critical that you recognize the sign of stroke, even if you're young and you don't think you're an at risk, you are. And so BFAST is a great mnemonic. So the B stands for balance difficulties, sudden onset balance difficulties. The E stands for eyes, so sudden onset visual changes. The F is for face, facial asymmetry or drooping. The A is for arm, arm weakness. The S is for speech, a sudden disruption in your speech pattern. And the T is a reminder for time. Time to calling 911 is critical. Every one minute that we go without blood flow to our brain, we lose 1.9 million neurons. 1.9 million neurons die. And so, and that's a, that's a frightening number. But but Dr. Bash, Dr. Bash, I got to stop you there. We're out of time. But but remember that everybody, be fast. Remember what that means, and we'll have that on our website so you can get more information. Thanks so much, Susie Bash, for joining us here. We've got more coming up. In fact, coming up.